for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shots. Never not the Mad Cheese, as always. In today's video, I'm going to be going over my top 10 defensive tips and tricks that you can do before the play even starts to give you an unfair advantage and ultimately make you a better defensive player. Now, these tips have nothing to do with the functionality of the game. I've already made videos about those topics. If you guys want to see videos like that, I will leave links in the description of videos that I made previously on this topic. Other than Woo! that, if you want to see more videos like this, as always, hit the like button, let me know in the comment section, and let's get right into the video. Starting off first, you want to make sure that you never pick your defensive play before your opponent picks their offensive play. This game handicaps for the defense so well that it not only gives you the personnel of the offensive package that your opponent is running, but it also tells you the exact formation. So with this huge advantage in mind, make sure that you always let your opponent pick a play first and then try to use that to your advantage, whether it's to match personnel or try to match speed or sometimes try to gain advantage based off of the situation, whether you know your opponent's going to run or pass. Next up, you always want to make sure you're trying to play the situation. Very early on here, we have a second and 19. It's going to be very advantageous to me to come out in as pass-heavy of a personnel as possible. The chance of him picking up a first down with two straight runs is not very good. So knowing this, I'm going to come out in a very pass-heavy defense. Now, in the very next play, I don't really cover my area well enough. You can see my opponent basically gets right down the field of me on one play. On the next play here, he tries to hurry me up because he knows that I'm weak up the middle. I only have three down linemen. That brings me to my next tip. Make sure you always know the weakness of your defense and try to to protect that weakness first. I try to close up the gap here, but ultimately I just don't have the personnel to do that. Uh, this is something that I couldn't foresee one play ahead of time, but no matter what the situation, no matter what defense you're running, always know where it's weakest and always try to user that weakness and protect that weakness first with your user. That's the only way you can play defense successfully in this game. Now in the next play, once again, we're going to cover two one more time. We have a little bit too much pre-snap spacing. You want to always make sure you try to close up pre-snap spacing ahead of time. You can see here this tight end is going to go right up the middle because because I didn't move this safety in, and you can see he's open right at the center of my cover two. This is another scenario where I really have to cover the weakness of my defense. I have to drop back the middle a little bit quicker, but ultimately I could have took that away if I just would have moved that safety in towards that tight end. Now my next tip is going to be make sure that you always switch it up. Don't get too predictable when it comes to what defense you're running. As you can see, I've run cover two several plays in a row. My opponent is starting to diagnose that, so we're going to go out, we're going to switch it up. We're going to hit him with a cover three, and we're going to see what he does with that. You're going to see on this very next play, it looks like he's in a very similar formation, but we're in a very different defense. We'll see how he handles that on the next play. Looks like these receivers are running the exact same routes. He has to take the two-yard check down of the running back. He gets nothing. Then we go back to the actual play call screen. You can see he was running the exact same concept uh, in a four vertical. So that didn't work out. Basically, when you're playing defense, if it's not working, you want to switch it up. If it is working, you want to stay with it until they force you out of it. So we're going to keep going back to that cover three until he shows me that he knows how to beat that or he can beat this particular defense. Now, on the next play, tries to run again. It doesn't get very much. Uh, I get a penalty though, so basically we give him a free five yards. I didn't really think I was off sides, but I guess I was I was covering the gap a little bit tight. Now, second and three, personnel can always indicate what your opponent's going to do. If they're in a two tight end set or if they have multiple running backs, typically that's a running package. If they're on a three receiver set or more, it's typically a passing package. So on this next play, we play the run. He only needs three yards, which makes sense. All these are pre-snap indicators that typically lend to running the football. Now here I wasn't right, nope. but ultimately this is about being right nine times out of ten. More often than not you'll notice that with these indicators the averages ultimately bear themselves out so it's all about playing the averages when it's all about playing the percentages when it comes to playing defense now in the next play we're going to play this situation we're going to play the percentages one more time we're going to hard flats third and three most times people are only looking to get those three yards just want to turn the sticks over we also have a run defense out there just in case he decides to run none of these things work out ultimately but like i said defense is all about playing the percentages it's about getting your opponent into predictable situations and playing the percentages and working the averages until they work in your favor now in the next play here we're inside the red zone we're inside the 10 essentially so we're going to play the run first even though my opponent is in a four wide receiver set with one running back i'm not falling for that i can't go in a full three four four three but i can go into a three three five and ultimately look for the run first on the very first play he tries to hit me with an inside zone and we take it down so ultimately you have to know that it's easier to run inside the red zone than it is to pass so you always have to basically play the run first in these critical situations on the next play my opponent's in an empty backfield set he's obviously more comfortable 
comfortable of a passer than a runner. So we have to take away that pre-snap spacing one more time. We gotta take away these throwing lanes. So we're basically just gonna create a situation where there's no immediate throwing lanes over the middle, which is probably gonna be my opponent's first read. You can see there's nothing really there that he likes. He gets a play, come back to him eventually, but ultimately short of the end zone, which is fine by me because ultimately touchdowns are the only things that matter. On the next play, we're gonna mix up our tempo. The same way that we mixed up our defensive play calling, uh, we have to mix up our tempo too. That play, we pretty much went all coverage. On the next play, we're gonna pretty much go all out blitz. So you can't let your opponent get too comfortable back there. On that last play, he definitely was. He had way too much time in the pocket. So we're gonna mix it up. We're gonna hit him with an all out blitz here. See if he can handle the heat and on the next play. He throws it short nope. as he tries to throw it low. He does not get the first down or the touchdown once again. So now we got fourth and two, which is exactly the situation that I want. I don't care that he basically got the entire length of the field. It's gonna be nothing if he doesn't score a touchdown. So on the next play, we're gonna defend the end zone because ultimately whether you're on your own five yard line or you're on your opponent's five yard line, you always wanna defend the end zone on every single play. Only touchdowns matter. So on every single play, you always wanna make sure that you're defending the end zone, no matter where you are on the field. On this next play, tries to hit me with a quick, a quick route. I don't know what happened there, but I know that ultimately I had a very successful defensive stand based off of the fact that I basically held him out of the end zone. He went the entire length of the field, doesn't look pretty, doesn't look good on the stat sheet at the end of the day, but ultimately field goals don't matter. Uh, you know, length of drives, uh, time of possession, none of these things really matter. The only thing that really matters in Madden is, is touchdowns because in Madden, you only get so many possessions in a game. And at the end of the day, to win games in Madden, you have to maximize each possession because there's games where you might only get the ball once or twice. So you really have to end those drives in touchdowns, not field goals. Because if you score two field goals, it only takes one possession to score a touchdown and you're down. So ultimately, it's all about scoring touchdowns in this game. It's not that field goals don't have a place. If it gets towards the end of a tight game, obviously field goals are important. But early on in games, touchdowns really win and lose a lot more games than anything else. Field goals really aren't where it's at. Now, with that being said, there are a few things on offense that you can do that essentially extend into defensive territory. Things like time of possession are important. There are a lot of people that will chew clock and run the ball from the very beginning of games. A lot of people that are very highly rated and highly ranked in Madden that essentially have a very specific game plan where they limit your possessions by basically extending their time of possession. So this is something that probably frustrates a lot of people. If you run to players like this, you may think it's cheap or cheesy, but ultimately it's a very smart move. If you basically uh, just take the approach that the clock is the most important thing, which it really is. You can basically run clock, limit your opponent's amount of possessions that they have, the same way that I'm referring to when it comes to touchdowns being the most important thing after every possession. And you can basically win a lot of games based on the fact that your opponent can't get the ball enough to score enough points to win a game. So playing ball control offense is definitely an important thing to do. Uh, and also limiting your turnovers on offense are all very important things to do when it comes to playing basically defense on offense. Now I was doing all these things on this drive. I was giving, uh, you know, basically eating up a lot of clock, playing that time possession game, but I did make that one critical mistake. I tried to make a bigger play than what was there. And quarterbacks definitely fumble a lot. So uh, I was doing everything I needed to do until eventually I just made that one critical mistake. So limiting uh, those mistakes are obviously very important. You can see my opponent scores on a scoop and score fumble from the quarterback. I mean, I'm going to end this half at a 7-0 deficit. So start of the second half, we are down 7-0. And if we want to play this type of ball control game, we really have to do it from a position where we're not down. So we're going to want to score here pretty quick. On the very first play, it looks like it hits me with an all-out man blitz, which is a mistake because we have a play dot up here that can basically hit a one-play touchdown against that. And on the very first play, we score. So ultimately, we couldn't play that time of possession game being down 7-0. Now at a 7-7 seven, seven, uh, tie, we can basically go back to that formula. So ultimately, we just have to get one stop on defense. So we can go right back to that ball control style offense and we can win this game. But we couldn't really do that. We couldn't just kill clock go down the field and score and then give him back the ball uh, with, you know, basically giving them the advantage where they could basically run off clock, run time of possession and win the game, which you're going to see my opponent essentially tries to do. So back on the defensive side, we're going to put all these things together that we basically uh, have been doing. Uh, you're going to see my opponent is going to take that approach. He's not going to have success because there's way too much time on the clock. I basically scored too fast for the, my opponent to try to basically uh, play the ball control game and try to basically kill clock on me and limit my possession which like I said a lot of top players do but he's not gonna be able to do that based off the fact that I basically scored too quickly which is something that they didn't want but you're gonna see they're basically gonna continue to try to run the ball that's 
going to be the game plan uh, because anytime you could end the game on the last play or give the ball back to your opponent with as little time as possible, clock management is super important when it comes to this game. You're going to see on this next play especially, um, he's going to try that exact ball control tactic as you can see right here. Hits the drag. He has no interest in turning up field. He basically wants to get tackled right there because he's trying to maximize the amount of time that he can take off the clock. He doesn't want to uh, you know, have, any, have too big a plays because if he has too big a place he's going to basically run out of uh, opportunities to kill clock because that's obviously what he's trying to do i think that he realizes before long that there's too much time on the clock to actually do that but ultimately that was the point of me scoring so quickly uh to start the first half it's because i didn't want to give him a position where he could ultimately um, kill clock me because you can see he is killing clock he's already run the clock down like if that's really the plan he's going down the field way too quickly he's he's eating up too many yards uh and he's also going out of bounds and stuff like that which is not a smart move. On this next play, we're going to hit him with pre-snap spacing once again. If I didn't move this defensive player down, we wouldn't have got the animation that we got right here. I mean, that's a route that does not beat man. So I don't know if he knew that we were man or if he just thought he could sneak it in there. But ultimately, that's a not a man beating route. And that's why that play worked. Because I saw the pre-snap spacing was off, I moved my safety down over the cornerback so that he was in a position to make a play. And then boom, we get an interception. And now, I mean, obviously the blitz was important as well as we hit him with an all-out blitz. But ultimately, we're right back in a position where we want to be where now we're going to be killing clock and basically just trying to win this game uh which is you know which is what you want to do like i said number one don't want to have too many explosive runs like that that play right there i don't want to be in second and one i want to be in like at second and four second and three stuff like that there are ways to basically play defense on offense and it really comes down to killing clock which is what i'm going to try to do here to win this game i know a lot of people might think it's kind of cheesy to play this way but he was trying to do it to us this is how you win a lot of madden games you play defense on offense you basically limit your opponent's possessions that's very important when it comes to uh, winning games. Uh, you see it at all different levels. You see pro players doing it. Anytime that you can limit your opponent's possession, that's just one more way to play defense on offense. And you can see now we're basically in a position where uh, my opponent doesn't really have any options. Um, he can't stop my run. He's not having any success with that. Now we're in a situation of fourth and one where ultimately, like I said, this is one of the better ways. If I'm going to kill clock, this is one of the best ways to do it based off the fact that it gives me another possession, another play on the possession you can see where once again we're just out here to kill clock we're not trying to score we're not trying to get big plays we're trying to score give my opponent the ball back with no time or no time at all if i could score in the last play kick a field goal as time expires we're never going to get to that though my opponent i think he knows his goose is cooked he knows that he's not going to get the ball back so ultimately he's just going to call it quits he's going to pull the ripcord he's going to basically hit the concede button and we're going to get a win which at the end of the day is all we really wanted to do so as always if you guys want to see more videos like this more defensive tips videos more gameplays do me a favor hit the like button let me know in the comment section other than that thanks for watching man my shit out need more help or just want to show your support then head over to my patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more link in the description below Thank you.